We're getting down to the business end of this regular season in the USL Championship from Highmark Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's the Pittsburgh Riverhounds playing host to Louisville City FC. Tonight's match is presented by AHN with Devin Kerr. I'm Josh Eastern. Thanks so much for being with us. And as we take a look at the Eastern Conference standings, these are two teams that have already booked their spots in the playoffs, and it could potentially be a playoff preview once we get there in a few weeks' time come October. But tonight, it is all about getting to the playoffs and trying to jockey for position in the Eastern Conference. And for Pittsburgh, it's their fifth straight season getting into the postseason. We wanted to talk about historics for this team too, right? So it's five straight seasons, all of which are under Bob Lilly. He revamped this team. The 2017 team that he inherited only had eight wins. Since then, every single year, it's got better. 15, 19, 17. He's got 15 again this year. It seems like each year they step in, they are a perennial favorite but something interesting came to mind about Bob Lilly's teams historically on what they've done during the regular season and how they have fared in the postseason Josh this is really simple against better competition they have struggled outside of that 2019 team which won the Eastern Conference which only lost four games all season long They've struggled against teams above the playoff line. It's that simple. Bob Lilly said, we understand that. It has become part of our DNA. We're going to eliminate it. We need to be better so that we hit the postseason. We know what we're capable of, and we can be one of those teams that are the powerhouses that everybody else fears. And as for Louisville City, last time these two teams faced off, it was all the way back at the end of April. Louisville City was part of that first big unbeaten run, and they got a 2-0 win on the night. First big. 13 games, because the 10 didn't match it, right? Yeah, that we yeah. most recently dealt with. But 13 games in all competitions. That's 10 in league play, three within the U.S. Open Cup. They smoked them. They were a much better team on the day. Pittsburgh was wheeling a deal and trying to figure out where the rotation was coming from. Mushigalusa, we've seen that a couple of times this year. Nine to be exact. But can Lou City now follow it up? Can they beat the Hounds twice in a row? Bob Lilly sort of has their number when he comes to town, but at Pittsburgh, it's more of an even draw. Five, six, and five overall. But they're looking at one thing and one thing only. It's not the Eastern Conference. It's not the win against the Hounds. They are trying to find a way to set organizational history and get the number one seed overall. This is the tale of the tape. They're trailing San Antonio, but they're not that far behind with just five games left after the conclusion of tonight. And of course, San Antonio in action at home tonight against San Diego Loyal, two teams at the top of the Western Conference. So we are all set to go from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A big one between two teams that have already clinched playoff spots. We'll have lineups and first kick coming up next from Highmark Stadium. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Fun comes in all shapes, sizes, and jackpots. These games, they've become a part of me. They get me excited, make me happy. Although I've never been one for math, I've never had more fun with numbers. The thrill, the suspense. You know, it leaves me speechless. But if there's one thing I have to say, it's how much I love it. There's a lot of love for the Pennsylvania Lottery. And when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. all season long at Mike's Beer Bar, Pittsburgh's home for local beer. With 21 TVs, over 300 local beers, and amazing food, Mike's is the place to be. Tell your friends to meet me at Mike's, Federal Street, right across from PNC Park.
Back here at Highmark Stadium, building you up to first kick. It's the Pittsburgh Riverhounds and Louisville City FC. Tonight's match presented by AHN. Time to take a look at tonight's starting lineups. They are brought to you by Armina Stone. We start with Bob Lilly and the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. He's rolled out an interesting one, specifically on the inside. Kennardo Forbes and Robbie Mertz should jump in to dueling tens right above Danny Griffin and Angelo Kelly. The caveat about all this is that Angelo Kelly could actually drop into the right back spot if needed. Now I see the three spreading themselves out. This becoming very transitional in nature, all of which comes down to Albert Dequa and his nine goals looking for double digits on this season in the final third. Lou City, Danny Cruz, they've made a couple of changes on the road and he's had to because of what's gone on with their rotation. Five separate players are gonna step in right now. Brian Onby, Jorge Gonzalez is back, not just into the 18, but into the lineup. Del Piccolo, Dia, West Sharpie. Dia, Sharpie, Sean Tosh in his 200th regular season of Harris, and Manny Perez, that is the preferred pairing. You have to imagine that this could look eerily similar to his strongest lineup outside of the opportunity for either a Ray Serrano to knock off a Mushigalusa and Onby comes over, or Corbin Bone stepping in for Jorge Gonzalez. They got to watch the defensive transitions and lock it down. They've struggled there recently. And that was a question I wanted to ask you as we got into things tonight, whether this was the strongest lineup, but there is the whistle. Our referee tonight is Melvin Rivas as we get things started on a busy sports night here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But all focus here at Highmark Stadium on jockeying for those playoff positions. Of course, Pittsburgh just trying to work their way up the standings and get that first playoff game at home, which is something Bob Lilly talked about. As for Lou City, as we mentioned in the open, they are trying to get that overall number one seed. It's hard to believe they have not gotten that overall number one seed in the USL in their history. They do have a great chance at it this year. We'll see how things shake out over this last month of the season. Already an early ball over the top. It's Albert Dequa just lost his balance. And this is knocked out of play. And certainly Danny Cruz, not the start that he wanted for his team. Got to catch his breath here a little bit for the palpitation on the sidelines. Sharpie, a little bit of contact. Certainly not enough to point to the spot. And to your point, you're talking about the number one seed. How's the sense that not only have they not reached that, they've only won the East once. The cross comes in, it's spilled by Morton, but cleared away once again. Pittsburgh all over Louisville here, just the opening minute. Forbes, low ball in, Sharpie able to clear it away. The black and yellow all over the white and purple here early on. Time for tonight's Keys of the Game, brought to you by IC Light. Well, I mentioned a little bit of it, but with the lineup that they have, and it looks like Kelly is going to drop into that right back spot. It gives him the ability, from a versatility standpoint, to invert into the midfield and get into this passive possession. Quick transitional movements from end to end because the defensive transitions have been so poor for Lou City on the back four. They've got to shore that up. They've really struggled. As the corner comes in, Forbes whipped it in with pace, punched away. And finally, a whistle will come, and it'll ease some of that early pressure from the Riverhounds. If you're Bob Lilly, you have to like that. Well, for Pittsburgh, coming off that 2-1 win at Loudoun, Ciceroni and Kizup scoring the two goals, and Bob Lilly saying it was probably better than the score indicated. They conceded a late penalty. But he did think his team may be a bit guilty of being wastefulness in that final third at times. So we'll see if they can shore that up. They have to be ruthless with these opportunities, especially at this point in the season, and especially against an opponent such as Lou City tonight. Here's Sharpie. D up. Did not keep that in play. And as for Lou City, the 2-2 draw last time out in the midweek at FC Tulsa. This has been a brutal stretch of games. 5-15 for Lou City. And as Danny Cruz said, just trying to get to the end of this stretch with as little injuries as possible. This is their last game of the stretch. They do have a week off 
before their match next week against Loudoun United at home. So an opportunity to collect themselves going into the last month of the season, but Danny Cruz said it was probably the worst 30 minutes of the season to start that game against FC Tulsa. And yet they still come out with a draw, though when you talk about Loose City, you talk about getting those three points. Pretty sure you you put that a bit more politely than Danny Cruz yeah, did about sure. the scheduling and sure. how they played. <laughs> Got to clean things up. Yeah, it's an interesting situation that he's in, and he acknowledged it about. There really is only one goal every single year within this team, and it's records, it's accolades, it's the Eastern Conference, it's the number one seed, and it's a title. And there are not many teams around this league, Josh, that can say the same argument. I mean, a handful, right? Tampa Bay Rowdies, for sure. You could throw them into the mix. Western Conference. San Antonio over the past two seasons, but even they have sort of been in and out historically, right? The, the ups and downs. Blue City's really the only constant. Phoenix up until this season. I mean, any, anywhere from three to five clubs tops, and that might be stretching it, where you step in and no matter what, you're expected to not maintain the precedent set before you, but to break through that barrier and set a new threshold. And that's where this team is heading, but there's a lot that goes along with that. It's the difficulty of playing on the road down the stretch, maintaining your form, finding a way to not only chase history, but get away some of the demons that have plagued you recently, specifically at the beginning of that Tulsa match. And it is never easy to come into this sort of venue, although Lou City, we've talked about their road form previously, eight, four, and three, tied for the second most points in the Eastern Conference, but they are 0-2-1 over their last three road games. The two losses against Miami and Indy 11 back-to-back, -back, and then the draw against FC Tulsa. Uh, this is definitely not an easy place to come. Just 12 goals conceded for Pittsburgh here on their home fields. And the third best form in the Eastern Conference at home. As Ciceroni will latch on to this. Back for Forbes. Sharpie able to get this away. Now Piccolo. And now Owen B. You see all those numbers centrally for Pittsburgh. That was that little tweak, by the way, on the back line that I said, like, look, Angelo Kelly can play the outside right back spot. He's done it intermittently for Bob during his tenure at the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, which obviously is only this season, 17 matches overall, but we saw it a lot more consistently, especially at the tail end of his career with the Charleston Battery. What it does give you is options. The modern game, the brain child and, and mastermind that is Bob Lilly, he likes rotation, he likes to challenge his opponents from a tactical standpoint, so it gives you the ability to bump him off the back line and join the ranks within the midfield, though you don't necessarily need him. They're basically matched up right now in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Forbes, Mertz, Danny Griffin are against Del Piccolo, Jorge Gonzalez, and Tyler Gibson. The key is going to be where is the rotation now going to come from? Canardo Forbes likes to wander a lot. Ciceroni and Alex Dixon, you would expect them to get high, though within those two, Dixon can shield himself further on this right-hand side. You ask Danny Cruz what he sees, he goes, it's Bob. You know, he's always going to question you. He's going to challenge you, push you to your core, to umpteenth ways, and back. And once again, he's done so, adding a wrinkle to a lineup that we really haven't seen this season. Seems like he's always tinkering with that lineup. <laughs> Kelly lofts this forward. Ciceroni putting a bit of pressure on Perez. Mertz will keep it here for the Riverhounds. Long ball over the top, and the flag is up for offside. Dixon was almost in behind.
Here's Mushigalusa, fresh off that brace against Tulsa in the midweek. Tosh looking for own beat. Tosh again, that 200th appearance. And this deflects back to Jamali Waite in goal tonight. Seems like Bob Lilly will stick with Jamali Waite as the num team's number one goalkeeper. Kevin Silva has got some opportunities as of late. It does seem like Waite is the number one man for now. Harris able to keep it. Now Mushigalusa, who's Dixon tracking back. Now Mertz looks upfield. Ordonez. Okay, ping a ball out to that left side, and it does find the foot of Robbie Mertz. Surveying, looking for options. It's Forbes. Switch a play for Kelly. Some patience here being shown by the Riverhounds 10 minutes in. Notice the respect given by Lou City as well. They chased a little bit in the opening 10 minutes. Now they've backed themselves off. They're fearful of some of those direct balls just like that one in the space in behind. Chasing a little bit, not to the liking of Danny Cruz. Ciceroni, the cross coming in. Just a loot of the run there of Alex Dixon. Runs all the way out for a throw in. Go figure. Yet still through all of that, you still allow a ball to come square back across. You're going to sit back, you're going to give up possession, that's fine. But a diagonal ball hit 35 yards away into that back corner. You got to be set up there. That's got to be smarter by many. Perez tracking back regardless of who he's matched up against. There's going to be speed. Ciceroni and Dixon can switch. Canaro Forbes will be comfortable, as will Dequa rotating out over there. Even Robbie Mertz will come out of the central location and trying to get on the end of some of these runs. But you've got to be smarter defensively. You've compacted the field. You can't then allow a simple ball like that to get in behind. And now a set piece opportunity for Canardo Forbes in Pittsburgh. Forbes curls this all the way into the back post, headed back centrally, Ordonez just wide. It was Peters to put that back centrally, and Ordonez wasn't far off. Danny Cruz is going to have a fit once again. You're set up, everybody's there. Look at the mismatch all the way on the backside. All six foot five of Jelani Peters rising up, and then look at the bodies right at the top of the six for Lou City. 4v1, you would think easy enough to step up in and have a clearance. Instead, Arturo Ordonia has almost had his pick of the litter. There's Dequa coming in from behind and keep it for the Riverhounds. Forbes lofting this forward. It does fall for Alex Dixon. Dia there defensively to flex out of play for a throw into Pittsburgh. This is a bright start for the home side tonight. Louisville have not really yet gotten going. Kelly, the cross, bouncing in. Harris will head this clear. Chased chase down by Williams. Dequa, Mertz making the run. Perez got there instead for Louisville. Put it back again. Mertz trying to pick out the perfect pass. Runs through and it's saved by Morton. 
But the flag is up for offside. He didn't know that and made a ridiculous save. I have no problem saying it. Even 15 minutes into the game, even with less than a quarter left in this season, this is the best pickup in the entire USL championship, bar none. It's Kyle Morton. It's the goalkeeper for Loose City. It's the former Pittsburgh Riverhound himself. Couple of seasons ago, but still the same form. And an early yellow card will be given to Wes Sharpie. I don't care about the offside call, his ability to get up off the line and step up in. Beautifully done, but then the recovery lacking once again. This isn't negligence by Wes Sharpie. He's in a move over the left shoulder. He's just tracking, and the speed of Albert Dequa got out in front of him. He's trying to lay chase. He's fleet of foot himself. Just got caught up a little bit. It's not a mistake. It's accidental. But now they've got to recover once again. Watch that back post. Same mismatch. Jelani Peters, Brian Omi. That's where they went last time, and they're marked up against each other. This one a little bit closer to goal, and it looks like Mertz will be the one to stand over it. Mertz curling this in, went for the near post this time. And Omi would look to carry it out for Louisville. Long over the top, there's Kelly heading it back for Jamali Waite. They can settle things down again. And you mentioned Kyle Morton coming back here to Pittsburgh since spent 2018 and 19 with the club. 29 appearances for the Riverhounds in his career. As Ownby now can look upfield. Ownby taking it on himself, but a contact there with Williams, or pardon me, with Peters, but that's going to go against Ownby. You can read lips, Ownby can't believe it. Well, I'm trying to figure out if I want to keep my job or not. <laughs> Maybe he saw the arm around him, I well, guess. Let, let's be clear, there's contact by Brian Ownby, and coming as he's already made contact and not even he Peters is the one who makes contact as Brian Ownby is falling yes his arm reaches up but I'll tell you I don't know a human being on the planet that when falling isn't going to reach up and look for some sort of assistance in that situation correct that was probably the most that's, that's, that's put very way good I could go you. Yeah, you know I've really been working good. on it Josh very good Deco applying some pressure. As Lucini looked to play out. Dia. Long over the top. And is headed back for Jamali Waite. Busy night in the USL Championship. Tampa Bay has already taken an early lead against Charleston, but how about Tab Ramos, his first game in charge for Hartford Athletic. Two goals inside of 19 minutes against FC Tulsa. Here's Alex Dixon, and the referee will bring this back. It looked like a handball, and it was. Free kick back to Lou City. Good for Hartford. Yeah. I love seeing that. I'm really excited to see what what that project looks like in a year's time. Even less than that, to be fair, right? The ability to turn some heads towards the tail end of the season. You know, talking with Tabby mentioned what an important time this was and why the hiring took place now. 
Thomas comes forward. And again, Kelly steps in defensively. Somehow is still in play. It was all about recruiting Joshua. It was finding a way to make sure that the perception was only positive about the club. So it's the hire, it's the results. You've already started work for the offseason. Maybe you can help lock down a few more players as you head into this winter transfer market. And that could be an extremely different team that we're going to see from a personal standpoint come March in late February when we see the preseason games. It's lofted forward again. Opportunity coming. It's blocked down. Chance for Ownby and again blocked down. A couple of blocks there defensively for Pittsburgh and out for a Louisville throw. It's a heck of a ball by Matiti. Mushigalusa. This is an area of his game. Defensively, he's got to be better tracking back and helping out. But as he does, look at the luxury that he provides on the front line. All the space that's been vacated by his own mark on the left side. Jorge Gonzalez steps right into it, challenges the back line. They don't get the late run coming up through. Good ball up over the top. You let the attacking midfielder go to work. Pelado Piccolo quite appreciative as well. Clapping on the backside saying thank you very much. More of that, please. And an early sub here for Lou City. I don't know if there was an injury or not to Wes Sharpie, but it will be Joshua Winder making his first appearance since the Phoenix game all the way back at the end of July. Now, great to have him back for Lou City and should be a big part of this team in the run-in. And we'll get a prolonged Lou substitute Lou appearance as it does look like Wes Sharpie is walking off with the trainer now. Did pick up that early yellow card. Did Wes Sharpie, but now it is Josh Winder coming on. As if they needed more injuries. Right. Right? And that's the main concern as they hit the final home stretch, so to say, oddly enough, because they've been on the road. All of these games that they will have for themselves, four or five to close out at Lynn Family. So we just got to get healthy. We got to find a way to get everybody feeling a bit better about themselves. And they've really struggled with that since you know, the end of their Open Cup run. Of course, falling just short against MLS squad Nashville. But pretty much anybody that you can think of. Of course, Cameron Lancaster still out trying to find a way to get him back in. We've only seen him three times this season. Two goals doesn't hurt. Wilson Harris, Mushigalusa, Brian Ownby, Corbin Bone, Jorge Gonzalez. Now it's on the back line. Hounds fans, if you need help with your insurance brokerage coverage and consulting needs, make sure to call Epic Insurance, a proud partner of your Pittsburgh River Hounds. Lofted forward. Peter stepping in. Dixon able to pick out the pass. Mertz keeps it moving for Cicerone. Good defensive play by Perez, but Pittsburgh keeps it with Canardo Forbes. felt just a few minutes after coming on. It's given away and Wilson Harris picks it up. Trying to spring Brian Ownby free. Mushigalusa is in the middle. And the cross again blocked down. Pittsburgh doing a great job getting bodies in front of the ball. The pressure by Louisville is relentless right now. Just a swarm. 
one ball to the next good chasing even as they picked up the turnover immediately on the transition. It's too far out in front of Wilson Harris runs through for Jamali Wade. It certainly slowed the game down since we saw in the opening 10 to 15 minutes. Blue City has they were on the defensive chasing all over the field. Much better. They backed off and all of a sudden they're feeling more comfortable playing a higher line defensively. They got to be really careful on the inside though. It's a foul. If you watch Josh some of the balls that are coming up through centrally Tyler Gibson's having problems and it's not his fault. There's just an influx of players. So as it comes through to Robbie Mertz Dequa is coming down in playing up next to him and Cicerone is pinching narrow. So you're asking one of the outside backs. It's usually Manny Perez on the far right side to come in a little bit. And that's why you see some of the balls rotating to the far side. He comes in to try and help out right in that half space just in front of the back line next to the right shoulder of Tyler Gibson and allows some of those direct balls down into the corner for overlapping runs or even Cicerone to check in bait him a little bit and then go back to the outside. Whistle there to stop play. It looked like the flag was up for offside. Look there at Bob Lilly, and this has been a very good stretch for Pittsburgh. Just one loss in their last 12 games as this cross comes into the back post. Saved there by Jabali Waite, and then put out a play for a corner kick. Point blank save as Wilson Harris was bearing down. It's certainly getting better too and the, the reaction and runs that you've been getting out of Wilson Harris as the season has gone on. Most strikers in this position are making immediately for the top of the six of the penalty mark but he recognizes the run is already in front of him by Jorge Gonzalez in the ninth spot. He's come up through the midfield and then he peels off. to stop play here. Pittsburgh will put it in play to restart things. Cross coming in, almost squeezed through there for Alex Dixon. Well, Piccolo just bouncing around the middle. Peters. Deco will chase, but the flag is up for offside yet again. for Pittsburgh just one loss over the last 12 games eight wins over that stretch They're unbeaten in their last four as well with a couple of wins couple of draws right through for Harris weight came off his line big collision and play will be stopped here there's two guys going hard for the ball this is better than the same we saw from Kyle Morton the question is, is does he take a knee to the head? Jamali Waite, quick on the draw. Beautiful little touch by Amadou Dia. Watch how fast he comes out. It is the knee. This is a dangerous spot for a goalkeeper. Well done. And I'm surprised that he leads with his head. A lot of instances here, you'll see him come with studs or you'll see him come sideways. So they get their arms out quicker. You can't blame Wilson Harris for his explosion in here. Feels like he's got a good shot on the ball. I'm doing the exact same thing if I'm the striker. This is why, though, Jamali Wade got an opportunity to be called into the senior squad with Jamaica. He's progressing rapidly. Just 23 years of age. First year professional. Farley Dickinson, then UConn. You know, part of his senior season, he had six straight shutouts. He just gains a level of confidence every time he steps onto the pitch. 
Some of that comes from just pure raw talent, Josh. The other side of it is, Kyle Morton can attest to this, you're playing for one of the best defensive units in the entire USL championship. We see it every single season, and the goalkeepers tend to pick up the accolades along the way. Kyle Morton, Danny Vitiello, now with Sacramento Republic. When we, we did the math a few weeks ago, the goals conceded per game. It's just over 1.1 at the moment, but over Bob Lilly's tenure, it's under a goal a game, 145 goals conceded and 155 under Bob Lilly. And that's why they're up and around the top of the Eastern Conference every year. And yet, within this game and this situation, it's an interesting argument. You're 30 minutes in, they were the certainly the better team for the first 15 or 20. You don't get any goals from it. This is sort of the story that we've seen. We told it within the open, right? We said, okay, they, they've gotten wins. They put themselves in quality playoff positions come postseason time. But when they've hit the knockout rounds, they're one and four under Bob Lilly. And this is a situation where you could easily run into this come the final seven. Right, we know the number one's gonna get there by and you're gonna be matched up immediately. Can you do it when it counts most? And this is one, do you want a home playoff game? Because these are the games that you gotta win. Bob Lely said, the ones that everybody looks at based upon where you're sitting in the table. Right, if it's the top four, if it's the playoff positions, if it's the Louisvilles, we've gotta find a way to win those. And historically, we just haven't been able to get that monkey off our back. This is the exact same argument. And Louisville's fighting their way back into this game right now. There's more dominance. They're providing themselves more of a representation on the attacking side of things. I still like the idea of attacking this left-hand flank more because they're finding success every single time they go there. But given how well you play in the opening 15 to 20 minutes, there's no reason you could head into this dressing room without a goal to show for it. There's Cicerone as they look for that opener. Obviously still a long way to go, but if the playoffs started today, it would be the Pittsburgh Riverhounds and Birmingham Legion. A game which we never saw last year. i take that again, right? Maybe Absolutely. even more so this year. Absolutely. Chance here for Pittsburgh. Dancing on the ball, comes back centrally for Mertz, lays it off, and the shot is fired out of play. Nothing doing there for Danny Griffin. This is good ball movement. I'm just, I'm a little bit hesitant as to why they go this direction. Why aren't you pulling it square back across? Watch the bottom of your screen. Look at Canardo Forbes. He is wide open at the top of the 18. The continuation is really simple. You drop that left shoulder. It's probably easier to be honest because your momentum's gonna bring you that way. You slide it right in front of King Kenny and he can pick any which direction he wants to go. Instead, you come back against the grain, and it's gonna be harder to hit that ball, Josh. A ball that's coming across your body, you can use your momentum to swing into it. It'll be right on his right foot. Danny Griffin's gotta step into it to get your laces or even your instep and not be able to push it up over the bar is one of the more difficult things to do from that distance. And wait, service, you can see it on his face. He didn't like it. Winder playing chase, act for Morton. And Kelly is brought down. Now Piccolo. Celebrating its 75th anniversary, Select is proud to be the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship. Choose what you play with at SelectSportAmerica.com. Select League's Choice, Player's Choice. As Melvin Rivas and Pablo Do Piccolo talk things over. Always like the hand gesture. We need a dub over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they made the emoji for it now. Did they really? Oh, yeah, there's a, I don't even know what you call it. I just think of, an, of Italians. Oh. 
Challenge there in the middle. Oh, some pushing and shoving in there as well. No love lost between these two sides. A little gamesmanship. This is one of the, it's so difficult as a midfielder, right? Because Griffin just stands his ground, but he does slide into it to begin with. As a player, you think, well, I've established position. What am I doing wrong? Owen B lets it run through, trying to get it back. And Forbes stepped in for Pittsburgh. Trying to get around Winder. Dequa was being held. It looks like just a free kick, no yellow card. I'm sure the referee will take note of that. We're just talking about Birmingham. You want a, a score line. Birmingham against Indy 11, it is three to one to Indy 11. Of course it is, uh, given the last four games, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Hackshaw with the first the half race, Juan Tejada has added on. Sante, two assists as well. And of course it's those two, right? With Asante on the backside of things. Right. Still no goal for him, huh? No, he scored a few weeks ago. Oh, that's right, finally. Yeah. It's, it's been a long season. He's waiting for that 50th goal. It's been a long goal. season, that's he's right, yeah. He's waiting for that 50th goal. It, was a, it took a while. Harris. I'll run through for Jamali Waite. You know who's been really impressive to me, 36 minutes into this game? Tell An me. Angelo Kelly. This is his 117th appearance as a professional in all competitions. His seventh playing at the right back position. You wouldn't know it. Really outside of the one check where Musha Galusa got him to commit to his position that he shouldn't have. He should have let the run go himself. Instead, he followed him all the way up. And that was the ball up over the top that almost picked out Wilson Harris and Jorge Gonzalez. He's done really well, one-on-one -on -one situations. Let's think about a midfielder. You drop onto the back line positionally, they're so aware of their surroundings. It's almost easier. You actually see a lot of movement for guys who, you know, they play a six or an eight or a 10, and just as you move through the ranks, whether it's academy level to college, or then college to the professional level, because of their inherent nature to be possession-minded individuals, but the fact that they understand where the movements are all coming from. You'll see them make that progression onto the back line and move into the defensive roles. Long switch of play. Mertz, though, couldn't bring it in. to work here in the middle for Pittsburgh. Kelly joining the attack. Looking for Dixon. He's crossed into the back post. Ciceroni was there. As this bounces out of play, but a player down momentarily. It will be a corner kick as well. That's Manny Perez who's down. It's a head-to-head, -head, another situation where no pressure is being put on the ball carrier. How does he have this much time? I mentioned to you defensive transitions coming in, keys to the game. At halftime, Danny Cruz is going to say, who wants this? Because there's no reason any player, yet alone someone like Alex Dixon, can step on the ball, turn, survey, have a cup of coffee, and then knock it into the box. And already in the background, we've got Oscar Jimenez just loosening it up a little bit. I'm sure the thought is that A, Manny Perez will be able to go, and B, if for any reason he actually needed to make a change, maybe we could stretch ourselves to halftime. The six plus might be a bit of a tall ask at this point in time, given the way that the Hounds have been attacking here tonight. And he 
you look at the stats so far, just three shots for both teams. The only shot that's been on target was from Lou City. As Perez is back on his feet. I'm not sure what's better in this situation right now, by the way. The fact that we're at nil-nil, or Canardo Forbes posts it up in the corner. That beautiful stance, and then check out my dude to his left in the Tampa Bay Mutiny jersey. Oh, that is a gem, my friend. Both of them. King Kenny, one of my all-time favorite jerseys, by the way. The Mutiny or the River Oh, the, the Mutiny the jersey, mutiny. absolutely. Okay. But still, USL Championship assist leader. 54 and counting. A true ambassador of the club and this great league. Just hanging out, having a nice chat with a fan. Same boys, time to go back to work. He's got a smile on his face as he curls this into the back post. Dixon, as was just off the mark for Kelly, but the return to Alex Dixon. And the cross comes back in, the heads go up. And the header is well off the mark. I think Pittsburgh was asking for some sort of foul. It never came. The way that they're stepping off the line. Great job here by Angelo Kelly as he moves out. And it's a magnificent ball that Alex Dixon really makes a move on. I again go back to the same argument that I'm making here, though, Josh, is where's the pressure? Yeah, it's a 50-50. It's a secondary ball, but... How is it possible that you leave one of the most dangerous distributors on this team wide open with all of that space? That's twice now in the past three minutes. This is what Danny Cruz has been talking about. He's told us over and over again how, you know, for some individuals, it's great the individual accolade. Sean Tosh, you know, ties the goal record for defenders in a single season. But it's that one second when you switch off. And I'm not isolating him in that situation. He's marked up in the middle. But organizationally, on the defensive front, it's got to be better. So that if you win the first ball, you got to be ready for the second and the third and the fourth against this Hounds team. They're too good to give up all these second and third options coming at you. Kelly, the square ball. Locked down again. Pittsburgh, though, will stay on the attack with Danny Griffin. Griffin. This is out of play. It'll be a goal kick. Mike Spearbar isn't only home to the famous stake on a stone, but it's also the official watch party location of the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Meet me at Mike's. And just as a reminder that the Riverhounds tailgate zone is open through halftime with quick service for food and drinks. You will be allowed to regain the stadium after leaving. Stop out and see the selections. And just as a reminder that after the game, players will be signing autographs. Make sure you stick around to meet the team. Presented by King Orthodox. Winder got himself into trouble, but then was fouled. You know, we were talking about the the referee earlier. We were having a little fun saying how nice I had been. Yeah. I had an interesting run in last night with a, a collegiate referee okay. during the, the Virginia Virginia Tech game. We were on the sideline. My play by play was Dallin Cuff, and he knew one of the referees. So he says hello, and you know we go back and forth, have a nice little smile. And then the gentleman said, Oh yeah, you know, I've, I've heard that you've been you've been fair to my kind recently. Whoa. So I said, Oh, it gets really? getting around. It gets better though. So I said, Oh, really? I said, Oh yeah, you know, Ryan Sigich, who's, who's head of the NCA referees. You know, we had a nice little banter back and forth. He goes, Yeah, it's great. And he cited one specific example. No, I don't know this guy to be fair. Does Pittsburgh come forward again? All the way to the back post, collected by Morton. And as we continue on. I said, yeah, you know, my, my most recent conversation with Ryan was the head referee within the Clemson game. And it was Clemson, Indiana, first game of the season, top 10 matchup. Yep. 
and there was a, a missed penalty call and a faux penalty call. I know what you're talking and, about, yeah. And, and I said to him, you know, they, they were so happy, Ryan was so happy because I talked about the subjectivity of it in terms of viewpoint that, yeah, maybe the call was missed, but because of the direction that the referee had, it was difficult to see. And he laughed and he said, yeah, that was me. Oh. So he was the head referee and he, he thought it was pretty funny because I was so nice and honest, which I was trying to be earlier. They're all human, right? Yep. At the end of the day. And I certainly would not want to be policing this brawl that it's starting to turn into back and forth between these guys. Josh Winder, as did his predecessor, Wes Sharpie, picks up a yellow card. These movements need to be more frequent, though. Finding way to get Albert Dequa out in the open field. It's really the only area the Hounds haven't had an advantage in here tonight. Very traditional in their ways with Dixon and Ciceroni, straightforward, up and down. Say the same argument for Robbie Mertz, Danny Griffin, Canardo Forbes. There's not a ton of rotation. The only really true change we've seen is that the movement hasn't come from Angelo Kelly to the inside. It's come from Jelani Peters. He's playing a very restricted role off the back line to the interior. Forbes will play that off to the far left side. As the cross comes in. The header is just wide. Six minutes of stoppage time in this first half. A minimum of six. Extra Where's that from? I, I'm asking the same question. I take it all back. Six minutes? I, I'm, I'm honestly struggling to find six Three, minutes. Three, maybe. We, it was extended, to be fair, on the Jamali Waite matchup against, what was that? Was that Jorge? Oh, that was Wilson Harris. Wilson Excuse Harris. me. Then we had the head-to-head. -head. I still didn't, it didn't seem that long, right? No. But hey, more soccer for you at home. There you go. And for you, Devin Kerr. will honor former coach, general manager, and broadcaster Gene Klein, be the sixth person inducted into the Hounds Hall of Fame, and the first since 2019. Pittsburgh in this series, of course, the game back in Louisville on April 30th. The last time they played, though, was October 10th of 2020 in the playoffs. Didn't score in that game either. So Louisville scored the last four goals in this series. The last game Pittsburgh did win was that opener at Lynn Family Stadium on July 12th of 2020, the 3-1 win for Pittsburgh at the hands of Lou City. Here's Dixon, racing in fields. The foul there by Angelo Kelly. This is the first time Louisville has been in Pittsburgh since November 2nd of 2019. Another playoff win for Louisville City. Paolo Del Piccolo scoring a 118th minute winner that night against the River Hounds. Long throw in. Chance here, and this is just looping over the bar. Ownby 
A hopeful effort there. He's kind of threw his foot at it. Nothing doing. Play this in behind. Williams back for weight once again. This is out of play. The reigning title holders visit in-state rivals as the USL on ESPN2 continues. Orange County looks for a late season surge against Sacramento Republic Sunday, September 18th, 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. And for a handball, but Louisville just take the throne instead. Final minute of this minimum of six minutes. In this scoreless first half. Here's Ownby. Moving this out wide again. From behind and a free kick to Lou City. This should be the last action of the first half. Gibson took some punishment there. Maybe steal something before half. They've been known to be full of trickery from dead ball situations. Be Gonzalez clipping it in. The header looping towards goal. Wait, watches this fly over the crossbar. And that's the end of the first half. No goals in it. Some chances for Pittsburgh, a few for Louisville, but nothing to show for after 45 minutes. It was an odd one, though. Yeah. And there were some corners, some chances on either side. Balls from the outside were extremely impressive for the Hounds. Neither team very efficient, though. This is a Louisville team that likes to have the ball and like to be efficient with the ball when it's at their feet. Passing accuracy usually up around 80. They are down around 65% right now. Anytime they've stepped on it, they've either gifted it back to the Hounds or been very direct. And yet the Hounds have taken it and they've extended it the other direction. This is gonna be a fight to the end. It always is between these two. Not surprised that we're still knotted up at zero, even with the chances we saw in the opening 45 minutes. So it is halftime here from Highmark Stadium in Pittsburgh, the only scoreless game of this early slate of USL championship action. Stay with us here from Pittsburgh. Fun comes in all shapes, sizes, and jackpots. These games, they've become a part of me. They get me excited, make me happy. Although I've never been one for math, I've never had more fun with numbers. The thrill, the suspense. You know, it leaves me speechless. But if there's one thing I have to say, it's how much I love it. There's a lot of love for the Pennsylvania Lottery. And when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why.
Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Back here, halftime from Highmark Stadium. No score between the Pittsburgh Riverhounds and Louisville City FC. Well, we mentioned it there in the first half, but a big night here in Pittsburgh as former coach, general manager, TV broadcaster Gene Klein. He is the sixth person being inducted into the Pittsburgh Riverhounds Hall of Fame. There he is being honored. You can see some alumni of the Riverhounds on the fields and of course, it's great to see Gene back at Highmark Stadium. He's done a little bit of everything too. It hasn't just been the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. This guy was on the Region OD, excuse me, Region 1 ODP staff for over a decade. And his influence within the community, director of coaching for Pennsylvania West Soccer Association. He was the president of Pennsylvania Soccer Coaches Association 33 years. Dear Lord, that's a long time. And good for him teaching history and coaching at Quaker Valley High School, which is really where his claim to fame came. Six PIAA state championships with them, twice inducted to the Western PA Interscholastic Athletic Hall of Fame. It says at the bottom, sixth member to be inducted into it, into the Riverhounds Hall of Fame, Josh, you mentioned it, but only the first since 2019. And this is only the second time they've done an induction. In that 2019, they did five, and then it was him. I can remember getting the opportunity to play for him in the late 2000s. A great guy, very direct, honest, sometimes brutally, but pushed you to become a better player. He had an enthusiasm about him that made you want to challenge yourself and find a way to not just be a better soccer player, Josh, but be a better person, because that's what he strived for every single day within his own self. And he did such a good job of branching that into, out into his players. Well-deserved for Gene Klein. Yeah, very well said. And now you've been seeing the University of Pittsburgh becoming a nice little soccer powerhouse as well. And there's a great soccer culture in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Gene Klein right in the middle of it. As you can see him right there in the middle of that picture as well. There is a ceremony here at halftime honoring him as he is up in the luxury boxes and it is great to see him back here at Highmark Stadium. A nice applause for him as well as some of the former inductees into the Hall of Fame also in attendance tonight in Pittsburgh. So we will come back halftime rolling on here from Highmark Stadium. We all have goals. But let's be honest, most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Cheer up. 
on the Riverhounds all season long at Mike's Beer Bar, Pittsburgh's home for local beer. With 21 TVs, over 300 local beers, and amazing food, Mike's is the place to be. Tell your friends to meet me at Mike's, Federal Street, right across from PNC Park. Time from Highmark Stadium in Pittsburgh. No score between the Riverhounds and Louisville City FC. News and notes from around the USL Championship as we are just about a month out from the playoffs. Of course, the Florida expansion, Jacksonville-based investor group, including Tim Tebow, hope to launch a team in 2025. And of course, Sacramento Republic, their end, or their run ended in the US Open Cup with that loss against Orlando City. What an effort it was, though, for Sacramento Republic on that night. A hostile environment it was at Exploria Stadium. Don't forget to vote for the Player of the Month at uslchampionship.com. Some scores from around the league. And how about Tab Ramos in his first 45 minutes as Hartford Athletic Manager. 3-0 win over, or 3-0 lead over FC Tulsa as for Indy 11. They're all over Birmingham Legion right now by three goals to one, while Charleston has responded to an early Tampa Bay goal as that one is knotted up at one apiece. Still much more coming up in the USL Championship, of course, with our schedule on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. You'll see Loose City on the 23rd as they host Memphis 901. Rowdies will also host El Paso on the 28th. But the next game up is Sacramento Republic and Orange County on September 18th. Should be a fun one there at Heart Health Park in Sacktown. So it is halftime here from Pittsburgh, hoping for some goals in the second 45 minutes of action. It's the Riverhounds in Loose City. The second half is coming up next. Fun comes in all shapes, sizes, and jackpots. These games, they've become a part of me. They get me excited, make me happy. Although I've never been one for math, I've never had more fun with numbers. The thrill, the suspense. You know, it leaves me speechless. But if there's one thing I have to say, it's how much I love it. There's a lot of love for the Pennsylvania Lottery. And when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here with every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill. You bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Cheer on the Riverhounds all season long at Mike's Beer Bar, Pittsburgh's home for local beer. With 21 TVs, over 300 local beers, and amazing food, Mike's is the place to be. Tell your friends to meet me at Mike's, Federal Street, right across from PNC Park. Halftime here from Pittsburgh, just finishing up the halftime ceremony as Gene Klein goes into the Riverhounds Hall of Fame. 
Time to look back at the first 45 minutes with our halftime highlights. As you can see, Gene Klein addressing the crowd here in Pittsburgh. And a nice ovation for him as well. As we look back at the first 45 minutes with our highlights, we start in the 11th minute. Not a whole lot of action in the first half in terms of shots, but good opportunities and build up. And Russell Cicerone had one down the left here. The aggressors were certainly in favor of black and yellow. And I was actually astounded at how much, not that they were able to be balls swung in from the outside, but that Louisville actually let them get to the interior positions. So much of this came from the width of Pittsburgh. And as they came in, it was opportunity after opportunity. Now, to be fair, Really nothing hit the target. Kyle Morton may have been able to get through this on the backside, but that's going to be concerning of the fact that you keep giving up chances, and even more so because you had no sort of presence on the other end of the ball. Loose City sat back. They continued to take this. This ended up being an offside call, and the little flick through. Cicerone just squeezes in behind Sean Tosh and Wes Sharpie at this point in time were the two that were struggling with the movements. But then you started to see punch back. 25th, 30th minute. Loose City started to find their way up top. Now, they didn't have a ton of chances, but I go back watching Wilson Harris in general, but really over the past five to seven games, his ability to get in behind the back line is starting to take steps of leaps and bounds. He's so smart with his runs, even in a situation like this. Watch him down into the pocket, then immediately starts to peel back off. Many a nine would have just sat there and waited for it. Instead, he's proactive. He knows that Diaz not far enough advanced to get in behind him. He's got to do both ends of the work, and it's done. 18 shots, only one of which for Louisville was able to hit target. Four for the Hounds and Josh. Let's have this conversation once again. It's 0-0 at halftime. Bob Lilly and his teams against playoff squads have struggled. They are in a situation once again where they were the better team in the first half, albeit that was at the beginning of it, but they're the better team at the first half. They still weren't able to produce a goal, and now all of a sudden, Lou City still within striking distance with 45 minutes to go. If you want to be taken seriously and you want to make a run at this thing, you got to find a way to close this game out. And if you're Lou City, that was survival at its best, and they have done a really good job at working themselves back into this match. But you mentioned towards the end of that first half with Manny Perez just get to halftime and then maybe make a change. It looks like there is one with Oscar Jimenez coming on here at halftime. And it is indeed Perez who has made way. So already two changes on that back line for Lou City. We'll see what this second half brings. With Devin Kerr, I'm Josh Eastern. Thanks so much for being with us here on ESPN+. Plus. A big second half in store here in Pittsburgh. Will it be the Riverhounds or Loose City to grab that opener tonight? Remember, it's been about three years since Pittsburgh has scored against Louisville. We'll see if they can break that skid right in this 45 minutes. That's a heck of a character move, by the way, just before we get advanced into this game by Manny Perez and a smart coaching decision, understanding that you needed to make sure the player's safety first and foremost was okay for Manny Perez. But if you burn that sub, all of a sudden you're sitting on three substitutes with only one window left. But instead, you're able to use the advantage of the halftime window. You've still got two and three to your advantage down the stretch. Very calculated move there by Danny Cruz and Lou City. As now they have a set piece opportunity with Gonzalez alongside Jimenez standing around it. This is Jimenez curling it in. Pittsburgh able to get this away. Own B. Racing away to the corner flag. Blocked out of play for a corner. Just the second corner kick of the match for Lou City. And again, it's Jimenez. Play towards the top of the area, Dia. Setting it into the back post. The header to come back centrally. Del Piccolo's there. Punched away by Jamali Waite. And now Dixon can turn up field. We talked about those defensive transitions for Louisville. We'll see if they can get this one right. 
Pittsburgh still coming forward. He will move it back out wide. Kelly's cross is blocked down and out of play for a throw in. How good is Jamali Wade in this situation? Smart little one. Back square across the box. You've got the trailing run on the backside by Musha Galusa, and then Jamali Wade coming off his line. It's aggressive. At just six foot one, that's not an easy task for him, especially with all the massive bodies that were just in front. Foul over there on the far side with Kelly being brought down by Jorge Gonzalez. Free kick here to the Riverhounds. driven ball and get it by the first man and Menez gets it away still another chance all the way to the end line clipped in and taken by Morton Manning has held the area very nicely turn it's Dequa Bandage being played Marks couldn't get a foot on it it's all the way through for Kyle Morton the second half pretty much picking up right where we left off in the first two teams to play there's only been one nil nil draw that came back in September of 2019 actually almost to the day September 7th of 2019 is right here in Pittsburgh there's only one nil nil draw but in the 16 games there have been 10 shutouts yeah but within those 10 shutouts nine multi-goal games so usually we see whoever is the benefactor of the positive play. It's not just one nothing. It's usually a 2-0 or 2-1, something like that. And another foul going against Lou City when there was a coming together. And Paolo Del Piccolo has some words for the referee and maybe for himself. Pretty sure the argument was on the left arm right there, but there doesn't seem to be much in it. That left arm on Canardo Forbes leaves question marks for me. There's a tackle on Del Piccolo in from behind. I don't see anything at all in the challenge on Jorge Gonzalez. That's the argument from the referee is there is actual contact, but if anything, he's got the fly swatter out with a miss. You workshopping that one? No. <laughs> Pulled it out of your little black book. Mine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Your ideas in the middle of the night that you've passed on to your friends are <laughs> awkward, man. No, I don't know about that from watching all those Indiana football games. That'll give you different types of <laughs> nightmares.
Wafted forward. Dequa. Oh, the referee pointed for a Louisville throw, and the AR pointed for a Pittsburgh throw in. Sounds and, about right. <laughs> and Louisville will get the throw in. I wonder how long it'll take Bob Lilly to dip into his reserves tonight. Lofted forward, it's Dequa. Beautiful first touch, comes back centrally, and this is towards the line and cleared away. I don't know how Louisville kept that out, but they did. Another opportunity for Pittsburgh, the square ball, appeal for handball, and it's waved away. A lot to look at here. Kelly, now the cross comes back in the middle. Winder heads it away, and still the threat is there for Pittsburgh. Louisville just couldn't clear it. Towards the end line again, this will run out. It'll be a foul anyway, but let's go back and look at that pretty chaotic sequence. Watch the ball that actually they try and clear it here, and then watch Oscar Jimenez. It's awkward. He almost puts this into the back of his own net. Josh Winder can't see it, and it's the recovery by El Capitan. All the way back across. One of, anyway. Good step up by Sean Tosh, and then Del Piccolo on the backside of it. No handball. That definitely comes off the chest of Tyler Gibson. That is some excellent recovery defending for Lou City. And the post coming to their rescue again. Ownby gets this away into the middle. Square ball there from Harris blocked down. Danny Cruz has talked about being locked in for the full 90, having no switch offs defensively. And that time they were locked in, albeit a bit chaotic. It stays at nil nil, and a chance now on the long throw. Header towards goal is just off target by Del Piccolo. Along and headed all the way back to Kyle Morton. Here's Winder. He continues his run. Mushigalusa tries to cut it in field. He was taken off the ball. Pittsburgh can go quickly. They could have numbers. Dequa holding play up. was bearing down on Morton. Let's be clear, it's not the best of touches back from Amadou D. It sort of sets him up to fail, but why not try and take this on the one hop? Just volley this thing, put some air underneath it, get it out of the way, and remove any sort of danger. There's been a couple tonight when they've tried to play out of the back. They've gotten themselves caught. They're real lucky that that one doesn't go.
Danny Cruz makes the catch. He's not going for the bounce pass, though, just the chest pass. It's Harris trying to keep this alive. And cleared away. Dixon just trying to feather that through for Dequa. Didn't quite come off. That's a ball. Playing it in behind for Mushigalusa and off the mark. Hey, Hounds fans, make sure to grab the Straub River Hounds Amber Lager while cheering on the team here at Highmark Stadium. You can also purchase for the Straub River Hounds Amber Lager at your local beer distributor. Heavy first touch, and it's cleared away. You know what we need? And it'd be difficult, given all of the, we'll say beverage laws, probably state liquor laws oh, is the more appropriate okay. way to put it. I didn't it. know where you are going with I'll, this. I'll let you know. Hang on. I would love, because of the collaborations that all of these teams have, with local distributors and breweries. I would love to have some sort of broker that could compile them all together. Oh. Which would enable us to ship them across the United Whoa. States. Not a bad look, right? Stone Brewing for San Diego. You just talked about the boys from Pittsburgh. Can we dip into USL League One? Absolutely. Why would we not? I think Ford Madison might have the upper hand there. We'll see, though. What's their... Uh, well, I don't know if it's directly associated with the club, but Spotted Cow, can't go wrong. Spotted, I mean, that that brewery in general. Um, New Glarus. That? New Glarus, that's right. They're fantastic. But just think about it. I mean, I'm sure our boys out in Colorado have something to say about it. There will be a yellow card coming here. I say we just bracket them all. And it is a yellow card to the halftime substitute, Oscar Jimenez. A yellow card has been issued. Louisville City's number 19, Oscar Jimenez. Another look at the yellow card. Just pulling him back there. Oh, Morton again. Some trouble, but does get it away. Warning was also given to Danny Cruz. Not quite a yellow card yet. Mushigalusa, heavy touch, and this is out for a goal kick. Mike's Beer Bar is the official watch party location of the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Come out to Mike's while the Hounds are away. The next watch party is September 14th when Pittsburgh travels to take on Birmingham Legion at 8 p.m. Eastern. Meet me at Mike's. And as things stand in the Eastern Conference standings, Pittsburgh would be going into that one a point ahead of Birmingham as they are still down 3-1 at Indy 11. Boy, Indy 11, Hartford, all putting on these late season surges. It's probably going to be too little, too late. But a chance to play spoiler for those teams. has got a touch to it. Some pressure there from Dequa. He's been very active up, up top tonight for Pittsburgh. 
Tosh. In the path of Gonzalez, the square ball across. An acrobatic clearance, but it had to be made. Just one shot on target for both teams as this will run out of play once again. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2022, whether your club is on the road or at home. Catch nearly every second of USL Championship action on ESPN Plus, the home to the USL, MLS, La Liga, Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn.com. Here's Harris, all the way back to Jamali Waite. It's Dequa. Griffin. And a foul there right at midfield. Free kick. Cicerone trying to cut it back. It's cleared away. And it will be a corner kick. Bella Devico has got to be real careful. He's about to walk himself into that little book of the referee. You spent most of your life in Gangster's Paradise, Josh. You know, I try. I can tell. <laughs> Here's Forbes. The in swinger is headed clear. down right in front of the fourth officials, Robbie Mertz, and quick chat with Melvin Rivas, and good to continue on. not sure. Louisville with this result now will go five points clear of Memphis. And Memphis does have a game in hand. These two teams meeting up in just a few weeks time. Memphis their next game coming up on Friday. They'll host Charleston. a combined 0 0.32 expected goals. Only three shots, only one that's hit the target. Pittsburgh has 67% packing passing accuracy. The good news is Louisville's actually up there, Andy. They're at 79 now. 
first half they were down to 62. Just kind of gives you an idea of the way the game's gone. Cicerone. Another blocked cross and a corner kick for the Riverhounds. No real chances, no real energy. Really the first time we've seen anyone for the most part in the second half be aggressive. Is it a set piece that can change it? Fernando Forbes is standing over it, you bet. Put my money on him any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Forbes. The in-swinger again is taken by Morton. Some more score updates. How about the Charleston Battery? They've taken the lead against the Tampa Bay Rowdies at home. Andrew Booth getting the goal. And as for Birmingham Legion, they have pulled one back. It's now 3-2. It's going to be a 3-3 game in the 89th minute. Watch. All right. Writing it down. Or it leaves at the tail end of the game. Ray Serrano will replace Enoch Mushigalusa. So now one more window for Danny Cruz to utilize. And has two subs to make. forward. Here's Tosh. Tosh coming forward again. Foul this one against Pittsburgh. Free kick to Lou City and a chance to get one into the area now. Will be Gonzalez bouncing all the way towards the corner flag. It'll be a throw in. Dia with the throw. Indy Lee headed away. Jimenez down the line for Serrano, just checking on. The referee says, get up. Be careful on the space. There's a lot of room to run into encounter here. And that is, if that's not the story of either team here in the second half, I don't know what is. Hey, Serrano trying to be a difference maker coming off the bench. Three goals, two assists so far this season. Another foul, and the referee going to his pocket, a yellow card to Jorge Gonzalez. He knows he's in the wrong two. He's standing right up over Robbie right now. Just to check on him. A little bit of sportsmanship by Jorge Gonzalez. We'll move back into the inside for 
Robbie Mertz, it's much too high. Both are making a play, and you just can't brandish the studs in that fashion. Header comes back centrally. It's Mertz. Griffin. Moving it off to the far side, and Angelo Kelly. And it goes back the other way. It's Edward Kizza coming on, Luis Arguda as well. Alex Dixon, Russell Ciceroni will be replaced. And Bob Lilly is really talked highly of Edward Kizop and how he's been training for this Pittsburgh Riverhound side, saying it's been tough to take him out of the lineup. He does have a goal. He got it last time out against Loudon on Sunday. And Maybe he can spark this attack that is looking for something in this second half. I like the back end of what would end up being a compliment to the compilation of this team in that how difficult it has been to get these guys on the field regularly, Josh, because he's never had the opportunity to have such a wealth and depth of talent on the attacking side of things. Like, he's always had a good goalkeeper, usually two. This year, he can run three deep. We know that he's run three, four, five, six, seven, eight defenders deep on the defensive front, good midfielders, but it's usually been one nine and then maybe one extra player. That's not the case anymore. The Hounds have a plethora of attacking options moving forward, but how do you get them all on the field and how do you keep them in form? Do you think Bob Lilly will experiment with two strikers? My immediate answer is yes, just knowing be that he changes systems so much. Now that could be within a game, that could be in a starting lineup. I'd probably look to the former and that he would tweak himself within it. I mean, I guess Deke still is on the field here. Yes, but they don't play with an out and out two up top, they drop one underneath, right? Yep. And that's usually the tendency that you get within his systems where, okay, you'll play a 3-5-2, but it's really a, a 3-5-1-1 and you play a false nine. Playing the two up top, at times, it's very situation specific. It depends on who you're matched up against. In a situation like this, I don't necessarily like it as much. I like the one, because even though you're forcing a 2v1 against the two center backs, you're also daring the outside backs to come higher, which allows your wing play to start to challenge. So you can get a Kizza and Argudo and Alex Dixon in their one-on-one -on -one situations. If you bring two strikers, now more than likely the opposition is gonna pinch at least one of them back because they're fearful that you're gonna have the mismatch and they're gonna get the better of their two center backs in the two on two situation. So this gives you, even though numerically it doesn't make sense in the two V one, it does in totality because you're giving your team the ability to be successful as opposed to one striker overall. And then the other thing you have to take in, into consideration is who do you then take out of the midfield, off the wing, whether it's Cicerone or Dixon who just came off the field. So a lot for Bob Lilly to talk about. It's been interesting because early on this year, they went through that, that tough stretch in the middle of the season. It was a six-game winless run before that win against New York, 0-4-2 during that run. And Bob Lilly said, we really want to solidify our lineup for those last 10 games. He said the last 10 games are important to try to get some continuity within the squad and really just try to mold the team together. You have your hand raised. Yes, I'll I, call on you in the back. I would just thought you to know, because you know I like to tell you when I'm right, and I'm sorry. Did, did Birmingham score? They did score. Okay. Okay. It's a little you. bit early, and I'm off my mark by 15 minutes. I apologize. Actually, 18 minutes, but... Math, still, still, still working on it. Marlon has actually equalized in the 71st minute. Two goals for him now, right? Yeah. Two in nine minutes. That's efficient. So that result would put Birmingham, I believe, back level on points. Good touch. And maybe something coming here, but it was Jimenez coming in just to slow it down.
This will run all the way out of play as the corner flag is taken out as well. I want to go back for a sec, Josh, because coming into the game, I talked about how poor it's been defensively on the transitional recoveries. Watch this here for Louisville. This is much better because as Robbie Mertz springs through, mistake or not, check it, 4v2. Everybody pouncing on the ball. More importantly, Amadou Dia, you've cut off the outlet pass. Dia takes the outside route, which still gives him the ability for the run down into the channel. And Josh Winder has cut out the ball into Albert Dequa on the inside. That's communication, it's organization, and it's execution on the tail end of it. Really been an Achilles heel of theirs over the past couple of matches. Here's Dequa. Is there something in this game for either team in terms of a goal? Kizza down the line. Options await in the middle. And it's taken in by Kyle Morton. Wilson Harris muscling his way forward. Looks like the referee will bring this back. Free kick upcoming for Lou City. There's been quite a few of them from this sort of distance and they haven't really caused too much trouble. Dia and Jimenez. Oscar Jimenez curls it in, the header towards goal. Easily taken in there by Jamali Waite. Williams, electing to go long over the top. Here's Dequa, a diving header there by Sean Tosh. And back to Kyle Morton again. Peters, no nonsense defending there, gets it away from danger. Our next game is on the road, so make sure you head to Mike's Beer Bar, the official watch party location of the Pittsburgh River Hound. Another cross coming in. This game's starting to get a little bit back and forth. That'll be a yellow card for Paolo Del Piccolo. You mentioned it earlier, it was coming, and that was a pretty easy decision there for the referee. You could have picked one up for this offense, even without all of the issues that he's had throughout the game with the referee, they've been barking at each other back and forth. A couple of infractions. This one, arm out in front of the referee, flips the heel as well. What about the cards within this game? Oscar Jimenez, Josh Winder, Wes Sharpie, Del Piccolo, Jorge Gonzalez. Five of them all for Lou City. Nobody for Pittsburgh in the book. There's hope yet. <laughs> the way the game's going, you have to imagine. Something's headed. Some pressure here. And yet Pittsburgh able to keep it. Dequa. And Danny Cruz did mention his team being a bit mentally fatigued, maybe physically fatigued as well. Do you feel like this team has been locked in mentally for this one? No. And you can see it. It's been better in the second half, but how many times in the second half have we seen either coming off the back line or the balls into the goalkeeper? Poor playing it back, poor playing it out. Decision making eluding them once again. The poor giveaways. Again, it has been better, but this is one where 
you get down into it, Josh, you, you just got to find a way to get a result because it's not going your way and you're not at your best. Can you be good, maybe not necessarily great? They had to deal with the same thing when they are on the road at Detroit. Now, I would say that the variables were much different, but you're 83 minutes in. You understand exactly what your performance is going to look like today. Just don't concede. Get out of here with at least a point, and if you can steal something, great. This is still one of the most difficult places in USL to come and get a result. You know, dating back to 2018 when Bob Lilly took over. 18 home games that season. Only two people came into this park and got a result. COVID year, eight games, only two. Last year, 16 games, only three, only two this year. Like to come here and get a win is very, very difficult. That's why you should be at least happy with the point. I'm sure that Danny Cruz and the boys in Loose City, even their recent form, would much rather have the three, especially with San Antonio having the lead for the number one overall spot in the battle that they're partaking in right now as they've just kicked off against San Diego. 0-0, 16 minutes in. They gave you a score update. It's one now. No. It's 4-3. It's 4-3. Tell me it's Indy. It is Indy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano Pino. Morton gets rid of this one. Oh, a little push in the back there. The next home game for the River Hounds is Saturday, September 24th. The River Hounds will be playing against Orange County SC on Hispanic Heritage Night. Brought to you by Bro Tachos. Get your tickets at riverhounds.com. Just quicker here, quicker. That's the other thing. You know, remove tactics. It's just slower. Two touches, three touches. Canada four seven. He can get away with it though. He can do whatever he wants. When you have that many assists, There's I agree. Little known rule that when you're the USL championship assist leader, you have carte blanche. You a cookie guy, Josh? Absolutely. Favorite kind? Usually I'm pretty simple, just chocolate chip cookie. Good ball. Here's Dia, all the way in front, taken it by Jamali Waits. Just got that final ball wrong, and that's what's, what has eluded both of these teams tonight. Remember I talked about decision making? Watch the top of the 18 as this ball comes back across and we get a look at it. Jorge Gonzalez is wide open in this situation. And it's the exact same thing where you've done all the hard work. The simplest route is the easiest. It's right there for you for the taking. And instead, you can't cut it off. Whether it be Pittsburgh Riverhounds or Louisville City, both managers, Danny Cruz, and Bob Lilly talked to us at length about making sure that their teams were at their best come end of season. This it's is a regression. It's Kizza coming forward. He'll keep this in play. It'll be a throw in. Sub coming for the Riverhounds. Marky Barra will be coming on for Robbie Mertz. Couple of Michigan men. They got an opportunity to play together for one year. Robbie Mertz was on his way out in the 2018 season for Shaka Daly, Marky Barra's freshman year.
Here's Peters. Interesting slate of West Coast games as well. Phoenix, Oakland, a big game in terms of those two teams jockeying it into the playoffs. Monterey Bay, Las Vegas. Colorado Springs also taking on Detroit City. Dequa. There's a foul. It'll set up a free kick for Pittsburgh down this near side. Luis Argudo curling this in, and it's right at Kyle Morton. Nothing doing again. If you want to watch the action from the field here at Highmark Stadium, make sure to call 412-865-GOAL to reserve the brand new Icy Light Corner Kick Suite here at Highmark Stadium. Kiz up, a deft touch to bring that down. Collision there, but nothing doing. Lead down the line, and all the way back to wait. Four minutes being added on. And it's Kyle Morno to dive and just bat that away. It'll be a corner kick coming for Pittsburgh and these a bit more important as we get into stoppage time now. Forbes curling it in. Fall for Ibarra. I thought he was going to hit it. I did too. He, he, had, he had visions of grandeur. Wait. Will this be chased down? Griffin trying to cut this one back. You know, Piccolo was there for Louisville. Griffin. Flurry here at the end from the Riverhounds, trying to steal three points. And it'll be another corner kick coming. It's Forbes once again. And they get this one right. And that is well out of play. And there will be a substitution coming. It's Elijah Winder. He will replace Jorge Gonzalez. Louisville City substitution number 23, Elijah Winder. Infant number nine, Jorge Gonzalez. Well, even with 
Maybe two drop points at home, if you want to put it that way, for Pittsburgh. Birmingham dropping points on the road against Indy 11 will actually vault Pittsburgh above Birmingham Legion by one point ahead of their game on Wednesday. It's the lone game in the USL Championship. Kizza bearing down. Kizza! Not a save. Kyle Morton once again, and that is a big time stop. Potentially saving a result here on the road. Take a bow, my friend. Take a bow, Kyle Morton. That was some kind of save in traffic, buddy. I applauded him in the first half. I've commended him in previous games, but this is a full-blown remembrance of greatness for Kyle Morton on that save that he just pulled off. Barring any spectaculars, this is going to be his 12th shutout of the season. Blue City, of course, as well. But the individual side of things has just saved Blue City because that could have easily been a goal and three points for the Hounds. Now this will be the 14th clean sheet of the season if they can hold out for Blue City. That will bring it level at the top of the USL Championship with Miami FC. Long downfield, one more chance. It's out of play. And there is the final whistle. We finish where we started. Pittsburgh and Louisville play to a scoreless draw tonight for just the second time in their series history. Pittsburgh will gain some ground, though, in the standings. And then Jamali Waite. He gets a shutout, and so does Kyle Morton. It's a league-leading 14th clean sheet tied with Miami FC for the most in the USL Championship. We will come back and wrap things up here from Pittsburgh. The points are shared, and no goals in this one. We will come back and wrap things up. It finishes Pittsburgh nil, Louisville nil. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. between Pittsburgh and Louisville. And it's time to look back at the 90 minutes with our full-time highlights. No goals to show you, but there were some chances in this one. And we'll start things off here in the second half. 47th minute, 
and some opportunities coming for Loose City, but the service just wasn't quite there. No, and you said it. There were some chances. I got to, <laughs> I got to tip the hat to both goalkeepers tonight, though, because they were very aggressive, took full command of their box. This is one situation where Jamali Wait, you know, he's listed at six foot one. That's on a good day. As a rubber band man, he's he's a little bit shorter than that, but to be have that much confidence and be that aggressive coming off your line in traffic when you've got trees in front of you from Blue City on the set piece. Very impressive. And you go the other direction. Look at the recovery. I told you coming in multiple times that this team, simple. Defensively, they had to recover in transitional moments. This was one of them. They got a little help from the post, but they'll take Lady Luck any way that they can get it. Could they find the go-ahead goal? This came down to decision making. Yes, Wilson Harris is on the run, but Jorge Gonzalez is sitting all by him lonesome right at the penalty mark. You cut this thing back across, he sticks it in the bottom corner, you get a goal and three points. Instead, only four shots of 15 hit the target. And to me, it goes back to efficiency with the ball or lack thereof. Loose City operating at just under 80% for the season. They were at 66.7% passing accuracy tonight. That's just not good enough. The Riverhound tried to open it up a little bit. I had no problem with the way that they tried to start playing in behind, but as the game slowed down, that benefited Loose City. They were able to lock down the tight channels. Pittsburgh just not good enough technically to put the passes together and break down that defensive front. Not surprised that it knotted up at 0-0. And that's how it finishes, but because Birmingham dropped points tonight, Pittsburgh is actually a spot higher in the standings, but still here in Pittsburgh at Highmark Stadium, nothing to split these two Eastern Conference powers. For our entire crew, broadcast partner Devin Kerr, I'm Josh Eastern, saying so long from Pittsburgh and Highmark Stadium, where it finishes Pittsburgh nil, Loose City nil. Good night. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.